The men were condemned to be executed. The man was preparing to cut off the head of the criminal, while the crows were waiting for the moment when the criminals would be killed to eat their flesh. The criminals were terrified. Such an execution requires great skill, because cut off the head is not so easy. The protagonist refused the last word, and the man began to madly beat on the neck of the protagonist, but nothing came out in the end broke not the guy, but the sword, which tried to cut him off. The officials were shocked by this sight, while the hero was disappointed that they couldn't kill him. He wanted to die, but he couldn't do it. He had killed an incredible number of people in the past, and that was why he wanted to die. The girl was thinking about the hero's background, that he was a great shinobi, he was an elite shinobi, it was easy for him to break a blade with his flesh. The hero also said that the executioner was incredibly weak. He also said that he didn't even have to use ninjutsu. The girl was curious to see the technique, but the hero sent her away. A little while later the hero was about to be set on fire. Death by fire is the most horrible and painful. One of the people tried to finish the hero with a spear but it broke. So the guy was set on fire and the officials watched as the hero's body was covered with fire. Even when it went out, the hero survived. He kept talking to the girl who recorded the guy's stories. He said that he did not even remember his parents, because they were killed early, he also had no dreams, because he could only follow orders. And he got caught easily, because he was betrayed by his comrades, because he tried to leave. The girl asked him why he decided to leave the village. In the past, the guy tried to be executed by bulls, the official was so eager to kill the hero. Usually people are torn in half with such an execution. The time came and the bulls ran in different directions, only to end up unconscious, which caused the official's anger to surge. At the time, the girl couldn't understand why the guy was resisting, because he said he wanted to die. He said that he did it for nothing, even though he was the strongest. In the past, the head had married the hero to his daughter. He thought she was a fool. She was a carefree naive girl who turned the guy's life around. She gave him a lot of advice and educated him. The guy was angry at her because he was afraid of losing her grip. After he said that he wanted to leave the village, the head of the village gave him one last task, on which he and his allies, even if the hero ran away, they would still not give him peace. After hearing this, the girl thought about it, and the hero asked if the story was interesting. Later in the evening, the man advised the girl not to get carried away with the hero. It turns out the hero has a name, namely the empty Gabamaru, which he got for killing a huge number of people. The man with horror in his eyes told how Gabamaru killed 20 of their people who tried to capture him and was not even wounded. He also told that some of them are immortal. The girl thought that an empty man would not resist like that. The hero wondered why he was resisting the execution. Even before the blade struck his neck he had strengthened his muscles. Gabamaru could not understand why he continued to live. It was for this reason that he was determined to die. The guy was set on fire with oil, but he still survived. Even people who were around him caught fire and died, but Gabamark didn't care. The official was incredibly scared that the hero wasn't dying. While the girl was saying that everything was ready, Gabamaru was led away, and he asked when he would be killed. The official said that this time the guy would definitely die. When they arrived, there was a girl sitting there, he didn't understand what was going on. At that time the official explained that this was no ordinary girl, she was a sword checker, a real executioner from the Yamadu clan. She had a great title, because she has incredible sword skills. The hero could not believe that the girl has such abilities. The girl decided to fulfill the will of Gabamaru, then instantly the guy's head flew off his shoulders, it turned out that it seemed to him. His body began to react on its own and he got out of the shackles. When the girl tried to kill him he dodged. The guy got a small wound. At the same time the girl continued to attack, but the hero continued to dodge. She said that she has often seen death. For this reason she realizes that the hero is a liar who has convinced himself that he has accepted death. The girl said that there is an emptiness in the hero, but also noted that he has a desire for life, because the guy definitely loves his wife who brought into the empty life of Gabamar colors, for which he loved her. The hero got angry and grabbed the blade, after which they made contact with the girl. He was angry at the words the girl was saying to him. He started yelling that she had no idea about his life. His wife convinced him that the guy was not empty. She also said that Gabamara was very kind. She also loved the hero very much, 
She also said that she got the scar to make the girl forget that she was free. She kissed the protagonist, and he got embarrassed, and she told him that he was very shy. The guy attacked the girl, feeding himself to convince himself that he was empty. In the past, he decided to live together with his wife quietly and peacefully. He wanted to live quietly with his wife. But these plans were not destined to come true. He had already lost all hope as suddenly the girl held out a document. It turned out to be a pardon, which will forgive all the sins of Gabamaru. He could not believe what he was hearing. The girl said she'd only give it to him when the hero went to the next world. Turns out she meant for him to go to the land of the dead. It turns out that this place was found. In this strange place was very beautiful. The legend said that in this place is hidden the essence of immortality, but as soon as they sent an expedition there, back came a boat filled with flowers, which caused people to question, but later they realized that the people sent to the island turned into flowers. No matter how many times they sent people to that place, no one ever returned. The hero could not believe what he heard, and the girl told that as soon as the official learned that people turned into flowers, he instantly ordered to collect death row and send them to this island, so that they would find for him the essence of immortality. It turns out that the one who can find the elixir can get a pardon. The girl said that Gabamara's wife is still alive. She definitely believes that the hero will return home. After the girl asked if the hero was ready to strive for life, and he became numb, because he really wanted it. Fatty wanted to order people to kill Gabamaru, but the girl grabbed the weapon. The hero remembered his wife. He stood still and finally made up his mind. After his body began to be covered with flames, people were frightened and the girl was surprised. Gabamaru was completely covered in fire and a moment later all the people were defeated and the fat man was incredibly scared. The hero decided to agree to the girl's proposal and they decided to go to the gathering place. Gabamara firmly decided to venu to his home alive, because he dreams of seeing his beloved wife. One day a man before his execution asked to have his head blown off during his own story and the girl's father decided to fulfill this request, and very beautifully and almost instantly chopped off his head. Even after losing his head he bowed to the listener. It was then that the girl kindled a desire to chop just like her father. He set to work and instantly cut off the head of the offender. She was praised for her fine cut, but after the killing she felt fear. The man said that the death of the convict was painful, and the girl continued to practice her blow killing criminals. The guy trained the girl, and told her that the blade of the sword always displays the truth, and the girl couldn't figure out how she could clear her mind and become like her father. She hoped that Gabamara would be the one to help her get rid of these feelings. At the time, there was a huge number of suicide bombers at the gathering place, and the man led everyone in. There was a big shot in front of them, but the criminals didn't care at all who was in front of them. The girl looked at the criminals and read information about them. They were all terrible people. At that time, the hero complained that he couldn't breathe and asked to see the official. At that time, people told that the person who could accomplish the task would get a pardon. One of the criminals was happy to be able to kill again. The girl was thinking about whether she could kill such a bastard without a doubt. The girl behind the back of the hero said that she recognized him, and then expressed her disappointment, because in her opinion the guy looks completely different from what the rumors say about him. At that time the girl could not understand what their hero represents. Everyone began to tell about the island, but the criminals did not even listen. They were allowed to open their faces, after which they were shown a man who returned from the island, it was the only man or what was left of him who returned from the expedition. Turns out he turned into this after he got back. He was incredibly creepy, and that was their only lead. People were talking about how the criminals could become flowers, and they were incredibly angry. A man talked about how they were all supposed to be killed, but now they had a chance. The criminals were also afraid that there was no elixir in that place. The men were given the chance to refuse, and one man decided to do so. Then he was instantly killed by one of the Watchers. They were told that the Watchers would be introduced to them on the island, and that if they didn't want to go to the island, they would be killed instantly. Even if the Watchers didn't like something on the island, they had the right to instantly slaughter the offender. It was also forbidden to return from the island without an escort. One of the men gave the soldier information. It turned out that they decided to reduce the ranks of criminals. It turned out that the places were limited, so they organized a competition between them. One of the guys instantly started killing, he was the first to realize what they wanted. 
After that, he killed another man. A massive battle broke out between the criminals, while Gabamar stood and watched the chaos that was going on around him. Blood was pouring out in all directions, the madmen were killing each other with smiles on their faces, and the official rejoiced at the sight. The massacre looked terrible, they were killing each other brutally, the official decided to take a closer look at the strong criminals. The military man started to look for information, it turned out that there was a woman among them, who managed to get into the castle and killed everyone inside. The other guy was young, but was already the head of the gang. At that time the man was a dragon blade, the official was very happy. At that time the giant was lying down and did not feel the blows at all. And the official was told about Gabamara. The truth is that he did not fight, but just stood still. Around everyone was killing each other, and the girl was frightened by such a sight. They were also taking risks, for the island was a dangerous place. The boy thought the girl was not suited to her role. It would be better for her to live quietly. But the girl was of a different opinion. As a child, she had watched corpses being carried from place to place to be made into potions. Their clan only lived off the deaths of others. Stones were thrown at the girl, calling her a murderer, which put a lot of pressure on the child's little mind. In the end, she took the sword in her hands, and in its reflection, she saw a terrible picture. The criminals further hammered each other. Some decided to kill the samurai and run away. The guy wanted to intervene, but the girl raised her sword. She remembered her childhood and the criminals ran straight at her and the girl could easily cut off their heads. But emotionally, it was incredibly hard for her. She felt terrible. At that time, the voice of the hero was heard. He said that he was not going to kill anyone. He ordered to choose another way. The warrior started to say that it is not the hero to talk about it. But as soon as the guy heard that there is no other option, he got upset. After the criminals told that the one who can kill the hero will go straight to the blow. Now almost all the criminals wanted to turn against the hero. Gabamara did not want to kill, but there was no choice, because he really wanted to see his wife. The guy began to approach the enemies, after which they all tensed up. He approached with a cold look, after which he froze and instantly one of the criminals was killed. The hero easily killed each of the enemies who only fell on his glasses, heads flew from his shoulders, a sea of blood covered the guy's body. And the official was scared because just now Gabamaru instantly killed a huge number of people and remained standing covered in blood. The girl realized that the hero felt the same way as the guy. The girl realized that she didn't need fearlessness to kill, but determination to bear the brunt of the killings she had done. The military officer ordered the battle to stop, and then the lineup was fully determined. Only the strongest of the outlaws remained. They outnumbered the humans and seemed to have supernatural powers. They were all sent on a ship, and they traveled to an island where they must find the elixir of life. The hero saw this island in front of him. The head was standing still, at that time. Countless weapons were pierced into his body, his intestines spilling out from his stomach. Even his head was pierced, but the head did not die in any way, he was immortal. And perhaps the elixir they were looking for now made him so. The hero said that the elixir of life really exists although it is not a fact that he is in this place. Together with the girl, the guy was walking on the island. His hands were tied, as it was one of the conditions. The girl, in turn, was amazed by the beauty of the place. There was a completely different world around them. At the time Gabamaru thought that this place is terrible, because the place is incredibly strange and dangerous, after which the hero took off the ropes. The girl said it was forbidden and ordered him to tie his hands back on, but the boy was not happy about it and started talking about how they had enough problems. Namely that they had little food and the only clue they had was a drawing. The girl pointed her blade at the hero and then ordered him to bind his hands. She also said that she wouldn't care even if he didn't find the elixir and then told him that she would kill him instantly if he disobeyed the order. The girl started to bind his hands as a moment later some kind of weapon flew at the guy. She was shocked. It turned out to be a giant who was happy that the first opponent was killed, while his watcher stood by and did nothing. The girl couldn't understand why this was so. At that time, the hero stood up and seemed to have suffered no wounds. It turns out that the giant is a killer who liked guns. At that time, the hero said that the criminal's hands were not tied. At that time, the man said that it would be better, and also said that because of his honesty, the girl is at the bottom. At that time, 
The giant was incredibly angry that the hero ignored him. He started pulling out his arsenal of weapons to finish off the hero. He started talking about killing all the criminals first, after which he was going to go in search of weapons. The hero didn't want to kill the enemy, but he had no choice. He was about to enter the battle, as he was stopped by a girl who ordered him to tie his hands. The giant did not wait and attacked the hero with weapons, but each of the weapons instantly broke against the guy's body. Gabamark finished tying his hands, then instantly attacked the enemy. A huge number of weapons flew straight at the guy, but he easily dodged and then counterattacked. The girl couldn't believe what had happened. At that time, the enemy was able to survive this attack. After some time, and the enemy was defeated, Gabamara decided to go with the girl to look for the elixir. At that time, the Watcher took out a weapon and decapitated the corpse of the criminal. He also said that if the suicide bomber dies, they go home. The girl told the guy to be careful, and he said that on the side of the girl is an incredibly scary criminal, which ropes do not prevent. He also said that he saw a terrible crime that happened almost immediately after landing on the island. Everyone tried to do everything possible to win. He also explained that it was better to break a rule and get the elixir. After that he wanted to kill Gabamaru instead of the girl, but the hero instantly stopped the katana and advised to refrain from silly jokes. The boy stopped and then told him that after a few hours everything would change. At that time, a huge man appeared before his watcher, and they swung in a battle in the results of which the ogre was able to kill the warden. The other criminal was able to deal with the enemy, and the girl who tried to seduce the man was killed. It also turned out that the next head of their clan will be determined on this island. The girl thought about the situation, she could not imagine that in the mind of the main character, at the time Gabamaru entered into battle with her, in the eyes of the hero saw the horror that he inflicts on others. In the past, the head had killed the hero's parent for the reason that they wanted to leave the village. The boy didn't understand anything at the time, but the head spoke of the cruel rules of this msur. At that time, the hero continued the battle with the girl. She was already incredibly tired. Then she said that if he kills her, he will have no mercy. The hero was going to find the potion first, because if he didn't, they'd send a shinobi here. He continued the battle, after which the girl could not strike and only defended herself, and the hero didn't kill her, even though he could finish the battle every second. In the past, the wife said that the reluctance to kill is normal, it was she who revealed the protagonist, and she's the one who gave him emotion. The hero changed because of his wife and on missions began to doubt, but life showed him that it is not worth doubting before killing. He couldn't kill the girl, then he wondered why it was so. At the time, the girl couldn't figure out how to cope. The hero agonized in confusion, he remembered the words of the chapter, after which he instantly broke the girl's blade, and tack oval. She managed to survive. The girl was scared, and the hero started to say that he felt sorry for killing the girl. After a moment, the hero was ready to finish the girl, and she was ready to die. Behind the hero's back was the head, who was the person who brainwashed him. The guy could not finish the girl. It seemed as if his wife intervened and stopped the hero. He didn't understand why he felt so awful. The girl didn't understand why the hero had such a face. She realized that he was an ordinary man. The hero was angry at himself for being so weak. He cried because at this rate he will not survive and will not see his beloved. The girl said that a really strong person is the one who can reveal his potential with emotions. The girl said she should have executed the guy, but decided to pretend it never happened. She longed to see the moment when the hero would become a real person. The girl sorted herself out, after which the hero changed completely, he was no longer the same empty one. At that time, in another part of the forest, a samurai was amazed at the huge number of statues. Suddenly a butterfly landed on his hand, and he realized that it was incredibly strange, then instantly cut off his hand. The severed arm turned into a tree and a huge number of similar butterflies headed towards them, and centipedes also appeared. Suddenly there were huge creatures that were terrifying in appearance. Gabamark also met these creatures, the girl was incredibly frightened, and the hero ordered her to stay away. Dragonblade was the greatest swordsman, as a result the feudal lord invited him to serve. They were drinking when suddenly the feudal lord said that Dragonblade wasn't that strong. The man was angry and chopped down the gate. Then the man was sentenced to death. 
Turns out he was going to hone his skills further and then break the house. The man noticed that the keeper had tools to cut open corpses. It turns out that he did it with special enthusiasm. Then the boy drew his sword, and the man felt the approach of death with all his body. The samurai also wanted to cut all the opponents, then was going to look for the elixir. The boy thought that this task was like throwing poisonous insects into a pot, from which the strongest would survive. They saw in front of them terrifying monsters that were rapidly heading towards them. At that time, the protagonist prepared to fight the enemies. Gabamara didn't realize what kind of monster was in front of him, he was ready to fight. But he also felt that it was incredibly dangerous to stay in this place. He attacked the enemy, but he did not die, and counterattacked. The girl was worried about the hero, but he was able to cope, then ordered the girl to retreat. The hero remembered the instructions of the head, that in such situations should run. At that time the enemy did not stand still and attacked. The hero realized that this island is incredibly dangerous. There were a huge number of giants around, which were heading straight for the guys. The girl was frightened. At that time, the hero decided to give 100% and Gabamaru attacked the enemies, and with the help of flames killed one of the giants. Moments later, and the other giant was killed. Gabamarth continued to destroy the huge monsters. While the girl was amazed at the enemy's level of strength, the girl could see in front of her as the hero exterminated the enemies. Suddenly, one of the giants was near the girl and was ready to finish her off. The guy was in confusion and did not know what to do. In the end, he saved the girl. The other guys intervened, and the girl realized that Gabamara was really strong. Together with the girl were two executioners. The hero wanted to be rude then remembered the instructions of his wife, and thanked the guys. The girl came to the hero, then praised the guy. She began to seduce Gabamaru, but the hero was completely unfazed. After he pinned the girl to the ground, and explained that she will not be able to seduce him, she explained that it was worth a try, and also explained that it was better for them to work together. The girl also said that one of the executioners joined her for the reason that she killed his criminal, and he decided that one executioner would not be enough for such a dangerous person. Gabamaru and the girl immediately realized that the Kunoichi had simply seduced the man. She also remembered that he had always been weak to women's charms. The other had originally been assigned to her. Kunoichi said that they had also come across similar monsters, and then explained that only with more people would there be a better chance of survival. Kunoichi approached the hero, and he pawed her again. The girl said that they didn't need to trust each other, but to use each other for their own benefit. The hero did not want to agree, because he thought that there was no benefit from such a union. The girl told about the bugs, which are a real danger. The girl said that she used the man to find out all the information about the monsters. The girl killed the man when he wasn't expecting it. At the time, the fat man said that the Buddha statues were quite creepy. The girl believed that the creatures from that place were quite real. Gabamara didn't understand why the girl was telling so much information. Gabamark asked the girl to stop lying, and she confessed that she just wanted to live. She also said that samurai wouldn't understand that. Gabamaro asked what the girl had really done to that man. She looked creepy, and the hero decided not to ask about it again. The girl hit on him again, and he snapped at her. They continued their conversation, and suddenly the girl felt sick. It seemed like she was losing consciousness. The girl fell to the ground. Tomu practiced with his sword. Afterward, he went to the basement where he said hello to his brother, and promised to save him. They talked about how they could escape together, and that's how the brothers got to the island. The man was shocked as soon as he saw the huge number of giants. He attacked the enemies. The boy has always had a great talent for adapting to any conditions. In the past, when they lived in poverty, he was always okay. He always got out of it. At one point he was captured by a bandit, and then the boy did everything he could to make the situation more useful. When the military came to them he ordered his brother to run, and rescue him later. The brother killed the enemies and gave orders. They continued their offensive. Suddenly the guy was grabbed by a monster and was in danger. The man abandoned his brother. It seemed that the guy was a burden to his brother. Suddenly he came back and saved his brother. Suddenly something strange flew at the guy. Monsters appeared right in front of them and started talking about how murder is a sin. They began to suggest that now they are not in a row, but in hell. The guy remembered the terrible events of the past and then pounced on the enemies without thinking who they were. 
because he did not care. The guy did whatever he wanted, because absolutely no one could order him. The guy looked at his brother with delight. In the past he cried and didn't know what to do, but his brother grabbed him by the scruff of the neck and explained that if he didn't know what to do he should trust his brother. They decided that the elixir was definitely in this place. They decided to drink the elixir themselves, because then no one would dare to touch them. The guy thought that it would be difficult, because all the people in this place are the strongest, because the weakest died first. By the way guys, before I continue, I want to ask you to support me by liking and subscribing to the channel. Also please write in the comments about the anime that you would like to see a retelling. Thank you for watching this video, and we continue. The girl looked at her father, who with all his appearance despised his daughter. She woke up and couldn't understand what had happened to her. They were in a cave, and the man explained that she had been poisoned by butterfly poison and had lost consciousness. The girl thought only of watching Gabamar. She couldn't understand what was going on, everyone was minding their own business. After Gabamarv showed the dish that he made, it turns out that when he was looking for food he also explored the island quite well, and nothing like it on the fruit he found. The girl asked if the hero knew about the elixir, and he immediately remembered the immortal chapter, but said he knew nothing. The guys talked about the fact that the hero found flowers that sprouted in the bodies, he assumed that all the flowers in this place are in the past people. Fatty was talking about how they shouldn't trust the drawing 100%. He was thinking that this place was more like a gathering of all religions. The girl said there was no way a human could survive in a place like this. She was shocked that the enemies had no organs, only muscles and bones. They also had no sexual organs. In their opinion, the enemies were some kind of unmade deities. They thought that the enemies were as if created artificially. This island could safely be called the Island of Mystery. At that time the hero was incredibly happy because he was sure that in this place there is definitely an elixir. They talked about the fact that now it is important for them to survive, and to study the nature of monsters. A little while later the girl was looking at the sky and was sad. She was interrupted by a man who ordered her to return home. He thought that it was too dangerous, because the girl would have to get married, as she was the daughter of the head. The girl refused and said it was her duty. The man asked if the girl could execute the Gabamar. He also said that she had lost her blade, and added that she was good to replace her broken weapon, then went on to say that the girl would not be strong enough to survive, because she was a woman. Another man intervened. He said it would probably be even harder to get back. At that time the boys decided to run away. The boy talked about how they had to go with the flow, and the samurai thanked the boy. The boy didn't understand why they should run away, because the boy would be executed. The samurai promised that he would definitely save the boy because he is a good boy. They got to the ship, and then realized that the ships were broken. Monsters appeared, and one of them smiled creepily. A huge number of monsters appeared in front of them. The boy yelled at the samurai for exposing his blade. It turns out the samurai is a bit stupid. Then he started a battle, and they tried to find the ship. The boy thought that now it was his payback. Earlier he offered the warriors to rest on their mountain. After that they exterminated all the inhabitants, and the boy was captured he wanted to interrogate, and then killed. The boy was sorry, because of him his family members had been killed. The samurai said that he did not want to execute an innocent child, and offered to go to the island. The boy didn't know what to do. At that time, they noticed a man covered with plants. The boy ordered the samurai not to touch the man, but he was chopped up by the tentacles that had already surrounded them. The boy remembered the horrible events of the past, and decided to surrender and die. Samurai could not agree with such a thing. At that time the boy decided to accept death. He believed that this is God's punishment Samurai fought with the enemy. The boy thought that he must pay for the death of his comrades. The Samurai heroically saved the criminal. He could not leave the boy to die, and fought an incredibly strong enemy. The Samurai said that the boy should live on. After the Samurai gave him a sword, and said that they had to survive at all costs, then they decided to head towards the boat. After a while the boat came to shore, they managed to survive, although they were incredibly badly wounded. Now they did not understand what to do, because the currents in any case send the kings back to the island, and there was a huge number of enemies. The samurai thought that there was definitely a way out, then he looked at the boy, who actually turned out to be a girl, the man was shocked and frightened. The girl thought it was a trifle, and the samurai continued to be embarrassed. 
The girl offered to marry her as soon as they got out. They decided to go around the island and find the right current. They also wanted to find their comrades. At that time, the man ordered the girl to go home, and the other was in agreement, because it was better to go than to die. He also thought that the girl should stay, because she was the only one who could stop Gabamara. She remembered the past and how he had saved her. They decided that together with Gabamaru, it would be much easier to survive. The hero asked if the girl would follow him at night, and then said that samurai are Cretans. They spoke to each other at the same time, after which the hero confessed that he wanted to ask how the girl was feeling. He felt guilty and apologized to the girl. He felt he owed her because she reminded him of his purpose, namely his love for his wife. The girl called the guy very strong, and he said the girl was even stronger. He thought she was incredible. She had a special power. Gabamark said that you can't understand your own power until you've broken some wood. He said it's hard for them to understand themselves. A little while earlier they had talked about how monsters also sleep at night, and the girl had said she wasn't going to leave. The man said her way was to have a child, because she was a woman. She wanted to choose her own way. Her father had been bullying her since she was a child. She wanted to become a real warrior. At that time the man continued to talk. The girl explained that she was not a woman but a samurai, and then said that she would live her life as she wished. She remembered Gabamaru and decided to live her life as her soul dictated. She asked the man to understand her, and he said that she insulted his hearing. Then he grabbed his sword and wanted to attack, but the girl instantly took his sword away. The man was angry, but behind his back was a Ludoit giant who attacked the man. The giant was healthy in the past. He would pick up rocks after which he would smash them. After a while he ate his parents. The man saved the girl, but was badly wounded himself. She ran to the samurai, but he was likely to die. The enemy did not stand still and attacked, but the hero intervened and threw the giant away. He was shocked that the man looked like a real monster. The girl realized that her friend was dead. At that time the enemy evaluated them as prey, and he had to start the battle in earnest. The enemy was incredibly strong. Gabamara's mind flashed back to the chapter's teachings. At that time the enemy picked up a huge log and threw it straight at the hero. Gabamaru ordered the girl to retreat and asked the Kunoichi to intervene. The girl said she was keeping her word. She said she was providing information and began to just cheer for the hero. At that time the enemy was attacking and Gabamaru had to retreat. The enemy was not only strong but also incredibly fast. The hero attacked the enemy with stones, and although they easily penetrated the wood on the body of the enemy, they did not leave even a trace. The hero used the cloth as a blade, but it couldn't even pierce his skin. At that time, the girl tried to save the man, and the man asked her to run away. She could not leave the samurai, and he said that the girl was strange, because she had just argued with him like a real man, and now she cherished him like a caring maiden. She didn't want him to die, he said that the girl was the golden mean, and then he held out his blade and said that he trusted the girl with his warrior soul. He asked to execute the giant, after which the girl accepted the blade. At that time, the hero did not understand what to do, and the enemy continued furious attacks. Suddenly the finger of the enemy was cut off. The girl intervened in the battle. She understood the structure of the human body, and for this reason she could wound the enemy. At that time the samurai said that he needed to dress his comrade's wound. The girl decided that now they should watch, and if they died they would run away. At that time the guys thought about how to defeat the enemy, Gabamaru told his plan, and then said that the girl will succeed. Genroi managed to repel the enemy's attack, but the girl couldn't cut through the enemy's skin. They had to retreat a bit. The girl gathered her thoughts, then calmed her mind, and the guys started the battle. Gabamaru's leg failed. It turned out that he hurt it when he repelled the attack. They couldn't defeat the enemy. She talked about bringing the enemy to his knees to defeat him. The enemy's stomach began to growl and he went into a frenzy and started screaming, then instantly punched and swatted the hero. The enemy cried out in time as Gabamaru got hit incredibly hard. The entire body of the guy covered in blood. The girl ran to help and the enemy attacked. It seemed that it was the end. The girl began to think about how she survived she thought about the need to calm down, after which the girl was able to fend off the enemy's attack, which struck Gabamaru to the core. The girl was serious about killing the enemy. At that time, the Kunoichi was also shocked. 
It turned out that she was at the bottom not because of weakness, but precisely because she was a girl. At that time, the enemy tried to attack, but she easily repelled literally every attack of that monster. Gabamara was shocked at how incredible and strong the girl was. The giant was tired and fell to the ground, and then the girl was almost able to attack, but at the last moment the enemy retreated. The hero had an idea, though it was crazy. In hand-to-hand -hand combat the enemy was dangerous, and from afar it is just as impossible to kill him. The hero prepared for battle and his body was covered in flames, then attacked with fire stones, he used a huge number of ninja techniques on the enemy, and although he did not get wounded, the allies were fleeing, they set everything on fire. The smoke is a poison that goes upwards, it was thanks to Dimu that the enemy was now suffocating. The girl thought about which one of them would die first, then the enemy fell down and she prepared to strike. The enemy tried to attack but Gabamark stopped him. The girl prepared to strike, then she struck a quick blow and the enemy remembered his life before he died, in which he killed people to eat. The girl apologized for making the giant suffer. The enemy was defeated. The fire surrounded the boys, and Gabamaru said they had to leave, at which time the samurai had already died. They were retreating from the place of suffering. The girl was very upset as she had lost someone dear to her. At that time there were giants in the forest, from which the guys were hiding, the enemies were going straight to the fire that was strange, because usually animals on the contrary hide from the fire. The hero said that they should go to the place where the monsters came from. The hero said that he would get to the truth, and he would get back to his wife. At that time, the other guys were wounded, but still alive and more adapted. They were walking towards the place where the monsters came from, and in front of them they saw the guys who ran away. They saw in front of them a strange place that looked like a village, they could not believe what they were seeing. At that time, the brothers' team easily dealt with the monsters. They drank their blood. They started talking about how there could be immortals in this place because it's in the religion. The brother thought it was nonsense, he was going to find them and kill them. Suddenly something appeared in the woods. They started to move there, and there was a strange creature, and it was eating a fruit that looked like the elixir of immortality. As soon as they saw the guys, they gave them a murderous look which made them scared. The creatures were shocked that humans had gotten to this place. They asked who the creatures were. They were talking among themselves. They were angry because they were interrupted at the most interesting part, and then the enemy from a girl reincarnated into a man. At that time, the hero was thinking that it does not matter whether there are immortals in this place or not. What matters is whether they are enemies or friends. A girl was watching the guys, and as soon as the hero noticed her, he ran after her. After he caught her by the Capetian, a strange creature intervened and scared the hero away. Gabamara thought that if he could catch the girl he would get information. He left the monster to the guys, and the girl followed the hero. The shinobi took the guy's glasses, then drank the liquid and her body was covered with a strange slime. At that time, the hero was able to get close to the girl, and she easily threw him. The girl tried to reach the girl, she still stopped but she instantly sized up and threw a punch that was incredibly strong. This punch was even stronger than the giant's punch. The hero was able to stand on his feet. After such a blow, the hero is more difficult to restrain himself, and he used the threads to catch the girl. He was angry, and then said he wanted to find the elixir as soon as possible. The girl was scared and started crying. Such astonished the guy. The girl began to calm the little girl. It looked like an ordinary girl, but the strength with which she hits is something with something. The others came to the place, and they began to talk about how the child should be calmed down. The monster started asking for the girl back. He promised to tell them about the elixir. He told them that they had food, but that didn't convince the guys. But as soon as they heard about the bathhouse, they instantly went after the monster. Eventually, they came to an abandoned place. The monster told them that the inhabitants were in this place 1,000 years ago. Inside they saw beautiful things, at that time the tree told that he never lies. A moment later, the girl was resting in the bathhouse, and was incredibly happy. The girl helped around the house, and the hero did not understand why the girl obeyed the monster. The girl joined the shinobi, and explained that she was following her. But as soon as she got into the water, she felt very good. The girl brought towels, and the samurai thanked her. The boys were shocked that they had gotten water. The monster brought food. He explained that the food was not poisoned, and the boys were incredibly hungry. 
Gabamark started to ask about the elixir, but the conversation was interrupted by a shinobi who started eating. Only the hero and the girl didn't eat. The monster told that it was Kanoku, where the gods dwell. He also said that he didn't know about the gods of men and that the elixir really exists. Tan is the source of eternal life. The hero asked where to find it, and the monster began to draw three parts of the island, and told that in the very center there is a thick fog. The hero was incredibly excited that he could get back to his wife. Gabamaru asked him to prove if the monster was telling the truth. At that time, one of the celestials was chopped in half, but his body was immortal, it instantly regenerated. The man tried to chop the enemy again, but the weapon was instantly destroyed. The monster talked about helping people because they were sure to die at the hands of celestials. Gabamark asked why everyone was dying in this place. The monster only told the truth. The celestials were supreme beings as they had all monsters in their power. The punishment was unusual, namely turning into flowers, which freed from sins and people could acquire happiness. People who turned into flowers turned into Dan. The monster showed how his arm was restored. The girl was scared because Gabamara was creepy. The monster also said that in this place, the gods decide the fate of people. The hero walked with the girl. He remembered that after she came out of the bath, she almost fell asleep. Gabamaru thought about the information he had learned. The monster's name was Mushin and the girl's name was May, and they had lived for hundreds of years, after which they had also asked not to be disturbed. The guys were worried that the celestials they had been told about were incredibly creepy. After Gabamaru went into the bathhouse, where a girl was bathing, and as soon as she saw him, she cried. The hero began to undress, and the girl was worried about the child. On the guy's body there was a huge number of wounds and scars, the girl calmed down. The girl firmly decided to bathe the girl. This she decided to do in gratitude to the owners of the house. After telling Gabamaru to rest, the girl began to tell the girl how to take care of herself. The girl's hair became much better, and she seemed to be very happy. The hero didn't understand such frivolity, but he remembered his wife telling the guy to rest. The guy was always embarrassed when the girl washed his back. The girl told the hero to rest more, because it's important. She said she wanted to have a quiet life with Gabamar. Later, the hero was getting dressed and asked the girl not to hide the scar, because it was not necessary. The girl was happy with these words and thanked the guy. Gabamaru told the girl not to be ashamed of the scar. He also told about his wife. The girl did not expect such words from the hero. At that time, the girl stopped Gabamaru, as if thanking him. As they walked, the girl pondered that the hero was not a cold-blooded killer. The hero began to think that he had no time to be a fool now. People were walking along the road, cherry petals falling into the water. In the past, the samurai had only heard people call him scum. After all, he was born and raised in a slum where his parents had no chance to feed him. He stole and took food as soon as he wanted to eat. He literally did what he wanted. Eventually he became truly free. One time he got into an argument with men and ended up beating them up. He beat them in cold blood as a blind samurai suddenly intervened and calmed the boy down with his blade. Already in the present he and the girl were walking along the beach, he was reacting funny to the words of the girl who said that it was a bad idea to waste time wandering around the outskirts of the island. After she heard the guy's excitement for her, she suggested that he marry her. He, on the other hand, offered to continue this conversation after they returned. Suddenly, a deity appeared in front of them. They were shocked by such a sight. The creature was incredibly evil. The boy and girl decided to retreat, but suddenly the enemy was right in front of them and struck a devastating blow. The enemy began to talk about hating change. The girl began to dodge the attacks of the enemy. The boy started to come to his senses and then slashed at the enemy's eyes, but he instantly healed, which scared the samurai. They decided that they didn't need to win, only to escape. The guy attacked the enemy again, and he managed to deliver crushing blows, and as soon as the opportunity arose, they started to run away. They ran with all their might, but the enemy caught up with them quickly. They found themselves in a dangerous situation, but an unknown person threw a blade and cut off the enemy's head with it. It turned out to be the samurai's mentor, together with whom they began to run away. The girl could not understand how a blind man could be so fast. When they got there, the samurai began to praise his mentor. 
and the latter yelled at his disciple because he was not fighting properly. Then the mentor was glad that the apprentice had survived. The mentor did his duty and was about to leave the island, but could not find a suitable current. He also said that there was a place to leave, but he also felt that it was incredibly dangerous. The teacher pointed his sword at the criminal, which frightened the samurai. The teacher began to say that they had a debt. He killed his criminal. Afterward, the teacher wanted to carry out an execution. The samurai tried to convince the teacher that the girl didn't deserve to die. At that time, the teacher said that they had no right to decide. After all, they were all just a blade. The samurai couldn't accept that. He remembered that the mentor had picked him up off the street. Turns out the mentor sensed talent. Samurai started talking about how he had the same feeling. They stood in front of each other, and it seemed that neither of them could back down. But in the end, the mentor agreed, because he was glad that his apprentice had grown up. The samurai was shocked that the mentor realized that the girl was not a boy. The girl said hello, and then the samurai said hello. They were afraid of an enemy that couldn't even be killed. The samurai thought about running away, but the enemy caught up with them, and the teacher saved the boys, although he was seriously wounded. The enemy was surprised. At that time, the samurai had attacked the god, but now he easily dodged the attacks. The teacher was seriously wounded, and for this reason, the boy had no choice but to attack the monster. But it easily dodged, then attacked the samurai, and instantly pierced his body with a huge number of holes. In the past, the boy was unaggressive and rude, but he was always mentored by his mentor. The teacher dreamed of helping people and also told him that the boy had talent. The boy sparred with the teacher and lost instantly. The teacher started to mentor the kid and the kid thought he didn't need it. The teacher started talking about the Sakura tree in which each bud hides great possibilities. The teacher was the first to believe in the boy. Even he himself thought he had no talent. The boy threw down his blade and said he would live his life as he wished. The teacher agreed, but he only put a condition, namely that the boy should strike one blow, and only then he could leave. He wanted to run away, but another samurai stopped him. He did not interfere and asked the boy to go with him. They came to the cemetery where the teacher's past student was buried. That guy was also a bully. The samurai told him that Teshin had left the dojo, but the teacher was doing his own thing. One day he went to an execution and realized that the person he needed to execute was his student. Tezen took a criminal path, but the teacher had no choice and beheaded the boy, who asked for forgiveness. The samurai said that the teacher just didn't want the boy to die like his firstborn. When the teacher came to the dojo, the student was already waiting for him and offered to fight. After which he attacked with a sword, the boy decided to learn sword for the first time. The teacher easily defeated him and at the same time instructed him to become stronger. The boy was also happy that his mentor was the first to sense his talent. In the present, the boy was all wounded, blood was pouring on the ground. It seemed like he was one step away from death. The monster was incredibly creepy, but the guy did not give up. He stood up and at the limit of his physical capabilities began to hammer against the enemy. The enemy struck another crushing blow. The girl was crying, while the enemy was recovering. The mentor wanted to join the fight. The guy tried his best to tell the mentor to run away. The mentor could not but fulfill the last request of the pupil, and took the girl and they together began to run away. At that time the samurai himself, ready to die, was fighting with a god in order to buy time. The boy began to think about what his future might be, and then the spirit left his body forever. The girl was incredibly angry at the teacher for leaving the guy, she cried. The teacher said that the boy was not just a student to him. He said that if they had stayed, they would have died for sure. The teacher promised to avenge the boy. In the past, the guy still managed to hit the teacher, but now that he was free to do whatever he wanted, he started begging for his mentor to continue teaching him. Guys, who feels sorry for this kid? Write about it in the comments, because personally I feel sorry for him. At that time in the village, the fat guy was talking about how the more he learns, the more confusing things get. The girl was worried about Gabamaru, who was thinking very hard. The fat guy was already overheating from the amount of information. And finally, when everyone went to bed, the protagonist remembered that in the past fatty said that now they cannot go. The hero did not want to wait, because he has a goal, namely to return to his favorite wife. The hero began to move deep into the forest as he thought about the girl he left behind. Suddenly he reached the fog, 
and heard voices that were very similar to Sutras. Gabamarg saw strange beings in front of him who were frozen in prayer. Gabamaru thought that no matter how dangerous it was, he must win because his wife was waiting for him. The hero remembered what the monster said. Then he got to a strange gate. After he approached, behind him was a god. The hero immediately realized that in front of him is definitely not a man. The god was tired of fighting humans, so he ordered the hero to leave. As soon as the creature realized that the hero is not a simpleton, they attacked each other, and Gabamarth broke the enemy's neck, but he did not die and attacked the hero. Gabamarth continued his attacks, but the enemy did not die. Gabamarth used fire to burn the enemy to the ground, but the enemy immediately counterattacked and literally broke through the main character's wall. Gabamara did not die, much to the god's surprise. He couldn't believe that he was just an ordinary man. They were once again swept up in a serious battle, in which the hero, although he was taking heavy damage, the enemy didn't die. The enemy didn't understand why Gabamaru was so strong, and then they continued the battle. The enemy was using his strength, and the hero realized that at this rate he would die. Gabamaru couldn't figure out what to do, so he just attacked the god for now. Suddenly, Gabamaru was able to pierce through the enemy's body. The enemy praised the protagonist, but now the enemy decided to become as serious as possible, and then his body changed and something invisible flew at the hero, and then the enemy continued to attack with energy, which broke through the shielding of the hero, because it is impossible to defend against it. Gabamaru was attacking the enemy at the limit of his abilities, they attacked each other with serious attacks, it was an incredibly serious battle in which the hero began to suppress the enemy, and he was able to turn the enemy into mincemeat. The god for some reason slowly regenerated, and then flowers started to grow from his body, Gabamark didn't realize what was going on while the enemy turned into something else entirely. The hero was scared. Such a scary creature. Gabamarth calmed himself down. He was going to observe and pick up tactics, but the enemy attacked with electricity, and the hero learned warp. Gabamara was able to survive this sudden attack. At that time the enemy attacked again, but the guy attacked him again, but it had no effect, because the enemy was attacking. The hero could not move because now he had received incredible damage, and now his body could not resist. Suddenly he opened his eyes and saw his wife in front of him. He did not understand what was happening, but decided that this horror was just a dream. The wife was worried about her husband, and then she went to the Huknya, while Gabamaru looked outside, smiling, because only in this place he was incredibly happy. He realized he was dreaming, but even so he was incredibly happy to talk to the girl. At that time the guy's body was seized, and the monster was squeezing the hero, but he remembered the 20th rule of Shinobi, namely that when death is imminent, you should wound or kill the enemy and take him to the other world with you. The enemy was getting ready to kill the protagonist, but suddenly a girl appeared and used her shield, and they were thrown into a cliff. At that time, the enemy turned back into a man, but now he was not young, as more like a living corpse. At that time in the house, they realized that Gabamaru was gone. The girl was talking about how they should go to Gabamaru. Kunoichi was against it, as it was dangerous. The monster said he would go with them. He wanted to find Mei. Now the opinion had changed, and they were going to go in search of the hero. They walked deep into the forest. The girl was deep in thought. At that time, they were thinking about who the Celestials were. At that time, one of the gods was talking to the other about which shell they liked more. They were having fun with each other. Suddenly, another god arrived, and to calm the others down, he began to talk about the strange people. One of the celestials was sickened to see his ally, for he had almost lost to a human. The god calmed him down and told him that they should not be arbitrary. Then the god told them that he had thrown the men into the pit. The god was worried that the humans were not the same as before, they were much stronger. God asked if the subordinate was able to finish the man off, and he lied that he had. Then they raised their glasses and drank the divine drink. The monster talked about there being seven immortals, but in the past there was only one. He alone split into seven gods, and they became the rulers of the island. The monster said that in the past he was a human, they were all humans, and they differed only in the fact that they had more faith. He said that the inhabitants were covered with bark, and they turned into trees when they prayed. He pointed to his daughter, who also turned into a tree, only without a mind. 
The monster said that it was impossible to resist the gods. At that time Gabamaru woke up and remembered about the enemy. He thought that it was not a god, but an ordinary ship. Gabamar got to his feet, then decided to find the weakness of his enemies. Suddenly, the samurai saw the protagonist, after which the situation became dangerous. The samurai began to sarcasm. At that time Gabamaru realized that the fight would end in the death of both of them. Even the enemy understood this perfectly well. They mimicked the battle between them. At that time the samurai intervened and stopped the guys. He asked about the information, and also about the girl who was near the hero. He began to say that Gabamaru should tell everything. The hero realized that the opponents were very strong. Gabamarg bowed to the guys, and said that he wanted to make an alliance. The enemy pointed his blade, but Gabamarg didn't even flinch. The samurai realized that everything is not so simple, because there is definitely a reason for the hero's behavior. After they heard the information, they were shocked by what they heard. Gabamaru asked the guys for help, and they agreed to do the same. The man said that he did not need a pardon, because his goal was to achieve eternal life, he did not want to get physical immortality, but to do the greatest feat, he dreamed of living forever in the memory of people. The samurai was shocked by such a dream. After that the man asked his opinion, and the man was incredibly delighted, he dreamed of dissecting the body of a god. They were able to come to an agreement. At that time the girl woke up, Suddenly she became more mature. The girl was able to tell the name of the hero, after which he began to ask her everything. But he realized that he was acting too harshly, and then thanked her for saving him. She thought about it, but could not answer. At that time other guys were discussing that this island is not some mythical island. The guy thought that this place was made artificially, he also said that in this place everything is mixed very roughly. He said that the island was strange, he thought that it was created by a single mind, he also thought that no one had ever returned from this place, and that someone had sent people here on purpose to lure more lives. The guys hoped that wasn't true. The girl believed that Gabamaru was alive, and she also believed that he wouldn't die, because he would do anything for his wife. Gabamark asked the girl to tell him the secret of the Celestials. She said the word Tao, then explained that Tao is the strong and weak, the soul. She couldn't explain it clearly. They couldn't understand at all what the girl was saying. At that time, the monster told the boys that the Tao is in all living things. Yes, and everything that is created in this world is created by the Tao. It was it that allowed the gods to be immortal and strong. At that time, Master and the girl were training together, and he easily defeated her. He explained that he would not train the girl. She remembered that they had to avenge Tenza together. The teacher wanted to fight alone as he didn't want to put the young girl in danger. She wanted to be trained by him, and then began to talk about how she didn't want to see her loved ones die. The teacher did not know what to do, tears worked on the man, and he agreed to teach her. He also told her that everything had waves, and he could feel them. He also told her that it was enough to feel them, and a great power would appear. At the time, others were talking about the Tao and the teacher believed that the equality between anger and peace was what made it possible to feel the waves. The monster also talked about how the Tao allowed one to gain strength and tolerance for mortal wounds. The teacher said that the girl will not succeed, and then began to talk about how to properly hold a sword, and in general began to talk about the basics. Suddenly, a monster appeared and was instantly killed. The teacher could feel the waves of all creatures perfectly, and he easily defeated the enemies while telling the girl how to fight. She also picked up a sword. The teacher said he would let the girl learn on her own. The samurai decided he needed to hone his skills. At that time, the samurai also entered the battle. They were glad to have opponents. He took the little girl on his shoulder and was going to learn this Tao in battle. Suddenly, Gabamarv noticed a strange creature. The gods were discussing that once they threw people into the pit, they would get their drink. They also said that it was impossible to get out of that place, because even the walls stopped people. However, the brothers were not ordinary people, and at the limit of their abilities, they were able to get out of that horrible place. The brother promised that they would kill all the gods, and he didn't want to listen to his brother. He felt that somewhere in the naval area was the god's weak spot. The samurai admired his brother. At that time, he decided to give the samurai monster meat. Suddenly an intelligent creature appeared that scared the guys. The man was going to kill the creature. It told that it obeyed the gods, 
and then also told that similar disciples went to other people. There are unintelligent monsters in this place, and disciples of the gods, who are much stronger and smarter than ordinary monsters. The enemy suggested that the humans go back to the pit, but the guy didn't want that outcome and pounced on the enemy. He couldn't believe that the man was so strong. The man believed that once he killed the creature, he could fight the gods. A huge number of giants went towards the humans. The brother ordered the boy to kill the little things. Although the boy was strong, he was also very tired. He attacked the enemy, but the blows of someone who has not realized the Tao cannot do damage. The enemy counterattacked, but without the Tao, you can't defeat a Tao wielder. It was for this reason that the man was seriously injured and fell to the ground. The samurai wanted to intervene as his brother's life was on the line. The guy was able to regain consciousness, after which he attacked hard. A strange tattoo appeared on the guy's throat. The monster realized that the man was able to connect with the growths. At that time, the guy suddenly realized that he was able to feel the Tao. He realized that the power of the monsters comes from this Tao. The enemy felt that the man became much stronger. So the enemy began to fight with the man. The guy not only became stronger, his body began to recover. The man's body became much stronger. They started to talk about the fact that with this change, the guy might not be human anymore. He didn't care. All he cared about was staying with his brother. In the past, he always protected his brother. He shot himself in the eye, then saved him. The guy started to move on the enemy and finally managed to penetrate him. The enemy was incredibly scared as the guy's strength was getting bigger by the second. Finally, the guy was able to see the Tao. At that time, the samurai killed all the weak monsters. The man started to approach the enemy. After that, he realized how to use the power. He started to concentrate the Tao in his hand. Then he was able to do a huge amount of damage. He could even see how the enemy was on the verge of death. The man began to ask about the gods and where they were. Suddenly, the guy's body was covered in tattoos. The samurai was worried about his brother. At the time, the samurai was chopping up enemies, and the girl called her uncle strong. She tried to explain the Tao, but he couldn't understand. She tried to tell him that the Tao is strong and weak at the same time. At that time, Gabamara was dealing with his enemies. Only the samurai studied the monsters. Each monster was different, which surprised the man. He was also surprised by a little girl. Gabamaru realized that she was definitely not a simple person, she began to cry, while the man continued to attack the enemies. The man began to talk about not making the girl cry. She said that you can't just be strong. At that time a strange man intervened in the battle, who stole the girl, he started calling her mistress. Turns out she was banished from the palace. He was happy to see the girl, and said they should go home together. The enemy began to say that people are not worthy to be near the mistress. The hero realized that the girl is also a god. The enemy started begging the girl to join them. Gabamara didn't know what to do, but as soon as he saw the girl's tears, he instantly interceded. The enemy said that people were nothing to her, while the hero couldn't understand why he interceded. He said he didn't want the girl to cry. Another enemy appeared, followed by a huge number of butterflies. The man decided to personally kill the bastard because he was the reason he lost his arm. The man dreamed of revenge. At that time the man went to attack, but he was stopped by the attack. The hero explained that it was a dangerous technique, but the second enemy also entered the battle. It was very difficult for them to fight together as they were in each other's way. The enemies began to talk about how people will definitely die in this place. Gabamara's face changed a lot, and he seemed to like it. The enemies told him that they were studying the Tao, and the girl was necessary for their training. There are five steps in the study of the Tao, and the most important and final step is the exchange of yin and yang, which meant that they needed the girl to have intercourse with her. That's why the gods copulated with each other. The enemy talked about the gods having both yin and yang, then he said that they usually have one. They talked about needing the yin of the mistress. As soon as the guys heard this, they were beyond angry. Nabamara was beyond furious. Yes, and man began to understand why the girl was afraid. Gabamara changed completely, the hero realized that he wanted to kill these enemies. The enemies decided to kill the humans, as it would be difficult to capture them alive. Everyone prepared for battle, the hero also remembered that the god also turned into a monster. They started the battle, but the pollen affected the man, while Gabamark fought the enemy with all his might. The enemies were weaker than the gods, 
but still possessed Tan. The hero pondered the power that the enemies possessed, he could feel the energy quite a bit. At that time the guy explained that in order to use the Tao you need to find a balance, then the girl touched the hero and the guy could feel, but he still could not see. It turns out that in order to see, you need to have both weaknesses and strengths, you need to combine these two concepts, then the girl explained that weakness leads to strength, and strength grew from weakness. Suddenly the hero managed to understand what the Tao is. And the girl noticed that Gabamarth has a huge amount of energy. The guy was able to dodge the attacks of enemies. They remembered that the head of the hero had a power similar to the gods. The hero was able to perfectly feel how the enemy would attack, and felt much more than before. His body became much stronger, and now he was able to get on the path to a new, and much greater power. The hero used his palm to break the enemy's arm. The enemy didn't understand how a human could be like a god. At the time, Gabamara's blows were taking a toll on the enemy. They could not believe that a hero could learn the Tao in a few minutes. They realized that they could not win. It turned out that only three Taoists went to the people. The man joined the battle, but behind his back appeared bugs, which the hero instantly exterminated, and they killed their opponents at the same time. At that time the guys managed to get to the gods, and the monster was instantly beheaded by one of the gods. The god was having fun, as the guys were the first humans to make it this far. The Kunoichi tried to run away, but the creature caught her instantly. Turns out he didn't want to kill the guys, at least not yet. He talked about wanting to chat. The monster said it was the same god he'd been telling us about. The god explained that killing the monster is not so easy, now he will turn into roots, and then the enemy began to tell that the souls and paradise is just a fairy tale, which was invented by the teacher of this god. Turns out this whole island was just a massive experiment. The Tianshir were created from ordinary people who came to the island, he said it was funny. He also added that people go to the Dan, which is the elixir of life, but the god explained that it is not the elixir of immortality. He explained that the person who drinks it will turn into a tree, and in fact the elixir does not exist. The girl was worried about Gabamaru, because at this rate the hero would not be released. At that time, Shinobi got out of the enemy's hands, and instantly attacked. The girl thanked her for trying to save her, and then she cheered the samurai up. She cheered up the samurai girl, after which they started to run. The god had already recovered, which scared the guys. These monsters exploded and left behind them poison. The shinobi was able to dodge. She used her key energy which is similar to the Tao. The fatty interfered with it. But the enemy decided to teach the guys how to use the Tao. He offered to copulate. The god entered the battle as he only wanted shinobi. In his opinion the others were only weaklings. He wanted to teach her. At that time the fat man intervened. The girl decided to try out all her abilities after which the enemy was enveloped in snake venom, after which he was able to tear the god into small pieces. He praised the girl, and said that the girl should learn to control energy. The enemy was incredibly creepy, he gave in to the guys, and easily dodged the attacks, after which he instantly scattered the guys. The enemy said that if you put on his body tan, then all attacks will be useless. At that time the samurai came to her senses, she asked the monster about the weaknesses of the god, the monster thought that he wanted to see the girl. At that time the enemy talked about the shinobi being incredible. The girl entered the battle, but she had little energy, for this reason she could not hurt the enemy. The girl was able to cut the opponent's dantion. However, it was useless because the girl had a small amount of energy. The girl didn't hesitate, her body was covered by an aura, after which the enemy was frightened and the blow hit the target. Yes and the wound was not healing. The god was shocked that she had succeeded. The girl felt that aura. She felt something similar from the hero and the giant. They realized that in order to wound an opponent, you have to put a lot of tan into it. The god was incredibly delighted, as the girl's energy was like poison to him. They decided to fight together as the enemy is strong. At that time the enemy disappeared, and a moment later appeared in front of the girl, but he was grabbed and she was ready to strike. The monsters attacked the shinobi, but the fat man saved her. The god managed to attack. At that time the girl didn't stop her series of attacks. They attacked the enemy and managed to chop off his limbs. But the enemy was not so simple. He flew up and regained his limbs. He turned into a girl, then started using techniques and the whole battlefield was covered with a huge number of attacks. 
The girl started to feel terrible. At that time, the shinobi told that the enemy is always trying to dodge the girl's attacks because her energy is dangerous for him. They decided to fight the monster. So the shinobi grabbed his leg, and even when she was attacked, she didn't dodge to stop the enemy. She was wounded, but she was not going to give up. Then she managed to land on the enemy, and the girl ran at the enemy. The enemy turned into a man again, and a fat man intervened to hold back the enemy. The girl was close by, and with a skillful blow, she managed to cut the enemy's stomach. The enemy was lying on the ground. His wound was not healing. They already thought that the fight was over. At that time, the tree was alive. For now, they thought about the fact that there are at least six such monsters. The girl was worried that the elixir didn't exist. The boys calmed down and began to rest. The boy seemed attracted to the delinquent girl. He was even a little jealous that she lived so freely. In the past he had dreamed of becoming an artist, but because of his lineage, he was destined to be an artist. He became a connoisseur of different faiths because he wanted to understand if it was right to kill. Eventually he gave up and just did his job. At the time, the girl said she could see that he didn't care about anything. That's how he got attached to her, because she was beautiful. The girl understood that feeling too. She remembered Gabamara. They decided to team up and find salvation for everyone. At the time, Gabamara stood over the corpses of the monsters. The man thought that it was cruel to drag the girl along with him. The hero began to say that the girl can ask him anything she wants. He will definitely thank her. At that time, the samurai realized that Gabamara had changed. At that time, the guy's nose bled, and he lost consciousness. At that time, the other guys noticed that flowers began to grow on the god's body, and suddenly one of the flowers stuck into the fat man's body. He instantly sank into his consciousness, where he did not know what awaited such an incredible girl. He dreamed of being near and watching her. He was very happy to be able to paint for once. He turned into a flower. Now he was finished. At that time the enemy had also become a huge flower, and was now a real monster. The girls were shocked that they would have to fight this monster again. Suddenly the master arrived on the spot and saved the girls. The enemy started to talk about destroying people, but the girls were saved by the master. After the girls started taking the others away, the master said he could handle it. He realized that this creature was a relative of the one who killed his apprentice. He understood that he had to attack the waves, that was the reason why he could easily handle the enemy's attacks. At that time, the fat man was rid of the plants, but it was no longer possible to save him. The shinobi decided to stop the bleeding, while the battle was in full swing. The girl told him that his mentor would not die. At that time, the man was fighting the monster, and everything around him was breaking. The man managed to push the enemy away, and the enemy's wounds did not heal. The teacher was tired. At that time the enemy began to laugh, and flowers began to bloom on the teacher's body, but he reacted in time and managed to stop the infection. The guys were worried about the man, while the mentor realized that his strength is still not enough to kill the enemy. The girl wanted to intervene and help, the enemy was incredibly dangerous, and the guys decided to attack. Only Shinobi gave up this idea. Suddenly the girl began to hug. It turned out she was giving away her powers and the samurai became much stronger. As soon as the mentor experienced it, he realized a lot. After that he also ordered not to hug without asking. The boys ran to the aid of the man who was in a serious battle. Suddenly, the guys came to the rescue. The girl said that the enemy had a weakness, but they had two dunton. Their bodies were covered in slime. The enemy began to attack, but the girl was easily able to dodge and counterattack and the samurai herself went into a fierce attack. The teacher realized that the girl also has this ability. The samurai began to run, while the enemy directed his attack, but it did not stop him, and he easily dodged the attacks. Together they started to push through the enemy, and the teacher was getting closer and closer to the target. The shinobi watched this and was shocked. The girl was already very tired, but they needed to keep fighting. The enemy laughed at the efforts of the humans and continued to attack, while the allies fought with all their might, the teacher headed straight for the enemy and then he dashed forward. He was incredibly angry at these creatures as it was one of them that killed his student. The man was covered in incredible energy. The enemy wanted to attack but the girl stopped him. At that time, the man was able to get ready to kill the enemy. His body was covered with a huge amount of energy 
then he thought about the fact that the source of energy is in another place. At that time the guy started to say that all the energy is at the base of the Lepistki, as the creature is a plant. The man did as he was advised. At that time the enemy called the man incredibly beautiful, because he had never seen such a yin yang. The enemy began to disappear, and at last she thanked the man for such a show. Finally, the first god was finally defeated. The teacher stood over the corpse of the monster. The fat man had only 30 minutes left. At that time, the shinobi said it was better to use the ointment to help the teacher. The girl couldn't accept that her comrade would die. The shinobi said that she was a realist and that the man would definitely die. She said that the fat man didn't need to suffer anymore. She asked him to finally rest. She hugged the man and then promised to stay by his side until the end. At the time, he thought that the embrace of a man he admired was what allowed him to die happy. Later the guys started talking amongst themselves. Only the girl was very sad for the dead man. She also thanked the shinobi for thinking in cold blood. She decided that they should throw all their strength to survive. Then she vowed that they would definitely get out of this place together. At that time, the main character woke up and instantly retreated. He couldn't remember what had happened. The other shinobi continued to walk forward. They saw a large number of statues and entered a strange place. They thought they could hide here. At that time, the shinobi decided to change their clothes. They relaxed. The teacher said that they needed to rest. Then he decided to talk about how to get back. He said that if you master the Tao, you can surpass yourself. They talked about how it was dangerous to use the Tao because you could lose your life and even your memories. They also said that there was no elixir of life. At the time, the girl thought that the head of the Gabamaru was immortal, and the shinobi said that it could be an illusion. Maybe the head was using it to make people obey. The girl couldn't understand one thing. Because shinobi are pawns, she thought about why he was married to the girl. At that time, Gabamaru himself had lost his memories, and the shinobi thought that no wife existed. At that time, the hero was in turmoil. He had lost a huge amount of memory. The girl looked at the hero and asked if he was all right. She saw that the guy's energy was disturbed. At that time, the girl was thinking about many things. The teacher dressed up in a new outfit. The girl was very sad as many people had died in that place and only three days had passed. The teacher thought that the girl had fallen in love with Gabamaru. He asked her who she thought he was and she couldn't understand why, but she was definitely attracted to him. She was also worried that the wife didn't exist and that it was just an illusion. She said that although the hero was a cold-blooded killer, he wasn't a villain in any way. At the time, the guy was trying to remember something, but his wife was gone. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I am waiting for your opinion about this anime in the comments, and Obias Namasti write anime on which you would like to see a retelling. I tried very hard on this video, and I hope you can support me by liking and subscribing to the channel. And I have to say goodbye, thank you all, bye.